We're pleased to once again be joined by our guy Ty Richardson, of course, host of the Morning Rush ESPN Arkansas Radio, and you can follow him at Ty Sports Radio. Thanks for joining the show, Ty. How you doing, buddy? Mike, I'm great. What a Thursday. I mean, we are two days from the Mecca of all Meccas. College football is upon us. I am going to eat and drink my way through this season, <laughs> as I've done every year since 21 years old because you know us we didn't drink before we turned 21 mike <laughs> never never and speaking of drinking i met up with you last week in nashville we went out for lunch and of course we ended up at the bar but then as you told me hell it you never really stopped that week did you no we uh <laughs> we went to a, a local yokel spot in nashville tennessee one of your um watering holes and then from there just did not pace myself whatsoever went down to <laughs> Santa Rosa area. Let me tell you something. If you're down at the Redneck Riviera, two words, and it's really one word, AJ's, Graydon Beach. It is the best ratio of any bar I've ever been to in my entire life. It was nice. unbelievable, Mike. There are beautiful women in the South, let me tell you. Maybe that could be a new sponsor of the show. Oh, please, AJ's, <laughs> Graydon Beach, new sponsor of that SEC podcast. I mean, all the people listening are probably going down there at some point, so you might as well. So, hey, I already know the answer to this, but I got to ask you anyway. I'm sure you saw the clip. Uh, what What's Arkansas bringing to the party? They bring an iced tea or they bring in liquor this Saturday? Oh, liquor, dude. Pittman, <laughs> Pittman always jokes with the fans before a big game. He's like, let him get lathered up a little bit. He likes those night games. He makes references it too. I think he likes to, to pop a one off after a win. I, I'm pretty sure he told us, if I remember – correctly that him hunter and the wives and everyone else were up till four or five o'clock in the morning after that texas went and for good reason after they pounded the longhorns <laughs> into oblivion so yes arkansas fans will be absolutely sloshed it is going to be about 92 a tick kickoff on on saturday in two days so hopefully there'll be a water mixed in here and there for their sakes so I feel like this is the same conversation we have every year with Arkansas. It's a great time to be the, a Razorback fan. The basketball team's incredible. Baseball team, we all know the tradition there. Now football. What's the anticipation level, though, with the Razorback fan base that you're so plugged in with? I mean, can can you think of a time where they were this fired up for a football season? Man, it's been over a decade. I think maybe you can make an argument for 2015 with Brett Bielma, had Brandon Allen, Alex Collins and company. That was a pretty good squad. But they had some puzzling losses, including to Toledo. I don't know. Matt Campbell was the coach. Then I think Kareem Hunt was on that team as well. Also lost to Patrick Holmes in Texas Tech. So you lost at least to a good couple of big leaguers that we know now have success in the NFL. But at the same time, it was just an odd season. Dude, it is juice here in Fayetteville, Fort Smith, Harrison, Mount Hope, Little Rock. You go anywhere in Arkansas, only thing on people's minds right now is Razorback football, and for good reason. Sam Pittman's got these guys fired up for this season. He's got the confidence, too. I think that's another thing that he projects as a quiet confidence. He's very respectful of Luke Fickle in Cincinnati, and he doesn't want to give them uh, any sort of motivation heading into Fayetteville because they're going to be ticked off, but – there's a there's a confidence within the state right now, and Sam Pittman is really the order of that. I don't want to bring up too many bad memories because, like you just said, there's so <laughs> much to celebrate. But you mentioned 2015. Was that uh, was that the year we had the damn truck fire? <laughs> Brandon Allen's truck was either in 2014 or 2015. <laughs> Best comment was when he's asked about it, my golf clubs were in there. <laughs> Brandon's a Brandon's a. A uh, Fayetteville guy, Bobby Allen, his dad was uh, on staff at Arkansas. We know his brother Austin went there. He's a he's a goober, man. He's he's got the swagger of a QB one. I sw I know he's married now and has a kid, but that guy never left Z Bar in Fayetteville without <laughs> at least one or two girls with him. That was just the 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 swagger he had on and off the field. But yeah, he uh he's a he, he's kind of got a little goofball to him too. I think I I don't know him that well personally. I've met him like once, and he was nice enough but yeah that was uh that was I, that might have been the season before but it was definitely a memory that arkansas fans <laughs> will hold the rest of their life so uh, looking ahead to the season i mean a lot of transfers incoming for arkansas which one do you think makes uh, the biggest impact to start the year for the razorbacks i think it's got to be drew sanders drew sanders coming over from alabama five-star kid out of texas catches guys that not li linebackers don't catch Malik Hornsby, 
Satane, these wide receivers that other linebackers would get left in the dust. But this kid's just a different animal. You start at linebacker at Alabama, you are a different duck, and he's got some speed to him. I'm ready to see him come off the edge and light someone up, preferably his former teammate, Bryce Young, week number five. <laughs> but I'd settle for – whoever Cincinnati trots out there. I know Fickle said earlier this week they've decided on their starting quarterback. Whoever they trot out there in two days, he's more than welcome to to put a beating on them as well, Mike. Yeah, what do you think about that? I, I wanted to ask you, Luke Fickle not naming a quarterback. I mean, at this point in time, I don't see the need in it, but what's your thoughts on that? It's just a tactical advantage he's trying to use. He doesn't want Barry Odom to have every single bit of knowledge spent on one guy. Yeah. And so – even if Odom has good sources or maybe someone's telling him pretty good information, he always has that in the back of his head. Well, what if Coach Fickle rolls out the other guy? What if there's packages for the other guy? Whatever it may be. Now, I, I wouldn't be too surprised if we saw a little Malik Hornsby package, not necessarily just a wide receiver, but a different thing. I'm really curious what Kendall Bryles does, but, I mean, Brian Kelly's not going to name the – the LSU guy, even though we know it's going to be Jaden Daniels. I don't know if it's Altmeyer or Dart for Ole Miss. I know that Haynes King just got named. Finley just got named, which I know you and Shane were talking about this week. I, uh, I'm i ready to see these SEC West quarterback battles this year and which one if they made the right decision or if they had to switch midseason. Now, if there's one guy that you can think of, uh, Ty, on this roster that may be the casual SEC fan – not a household name on this Arkansas roster that you think is a breakout player, potentially even right out the gate. Who's the first name that comes to your mind? Well, I give credit to a guy that doesn't get enough credit, and that's the center, Ricky Stromberg. Here's an all-SEC guy, a guy that most fans, when you think about marquee players, you don't think about offensive linemen. It just doesn't come to. But he's going to be a potential All-American candidate. They haven't had a Remington Award winner, I believe, since Jonathan Luigs in 2006 or seven. He has a chance to be that. Sam Pittman, we know his success at offensive line. He was on record saying, look, Cody's better than I was, than I was at his age, and I think he's incredible. People seem to love Cody Kenny. His press conferences are fantastic. So I would say Ricky Stromberg, Mike, is my kind of unheralded pick if you ask the SEC fan, hey, which Arkansas player are you going to go with that might not be so known? Who do you think will lead Arkansas in receiving in this opener against Cincinnati? How about Matt Landers? I didn't think he was going to start. 6'5 kid, didn't really play at Georgia, has a good year at Toledo, 500-plus yards, I think five touchdowns, had a really big – can't remember. They had one really big game. Man, Landers can just fly. And if you're 6'5 and you can run too, man, I, I, KJ just needs to throw you the ball. So in post routes, and maybe it's just one or two deep balls, but you know how it is, Mike. All it takes is a couple of long throws, and next thing you know, guy's got 70, 80 yards. I don't know if anyone's going to bust 100 yards in game one. I know Brian and Gardner are on the other side, but I think that if I'm fickle, I'm saying, look, I don't trust any of you wide receivers. Y'all can't do anything on us. I don't care if we just lost two guys in the NFL. Beat us right now. And I'm stacking the box. I'm bringing safeties down. I'm doing whatever it takes to make sure KJ, Rocket, if Dominique plays, AJ, and the other guys, they don't beat us. That's my mindset if I'm Luke Fickle. Curious what he does on Saturday for that Arkansas offense against it. How many design runs do you think we'll have for KJ Jefferson in this ballgame? And, and kind of like a two-parter to that, but would you try to limit that? Because I think, you know, against Alabama, a and some of the better teams you're going to face – you know, KJ is going to have to put the team on his back. And, and certainly you'd hope that's not the case here against Cincinnati. So would you try to kind of limit his design runs? That's a great question, Mike. Kendall Bryles was on record saying that KJ is going to do whatever it takes to win. If it's a couple keeps a game, if it's 15 keeps a game, I think this guy just wants to win football games. And that's a player that you want leading your team, your program. This guy is a tough dude. A tough dude. You know how we always see these pictures of like a dog poking out of the heart? <laughs> KJ is that picture. He is that image that we see. He's just an absolute – and that's why all these guys follow him. So, I I don't think you can necessarily limit – I think that Arkansas's running attack from the running backs will be better because they're back in Bryles' system for another year. I don't know if KJ will get – I think he was 660-something last year. I don't know if he achieves that. 
so I'm kind of with you because I don't want him. I don't want him to have to beat Cincinnati. You should have enough on your own to beat Cincinnati. Yeah. You need him for Alabama. You need him for AM. You might need him down the road for LSU. We saw what he had to do against Ole Miss last year to keep him in it. So I'm I'm with in with your line of thinking on that one, Mike. What's the biggest uh, question mark that you have for this Razorback team that that you just you can't answer it until we see him on the field on Saturday? D line, man. I I've, I've said it for four months. That defensive line, and I don't care what positives come out of the coaching staff's mouth until I see what they they're going up against five returning starters on Saturday. It's going to be a pretty good telling sign. Now it's not Alabama. It's not Georgia, LSU, some of the guys that will be on those rosters on their front five. But when you got five returning starters on a team that went to the college football playoff last year, it's a pretty big deal. And Barry Odom's going to try and dial up a bunch of different things, get Drew Sanders involved in the blitz packages along with some other cornerbacks and safeties. But your front four, or when they run three, last first four games last year, they were awesome. They got pressure with three. After that, not so much. So that being said, if that D-line is even slightly better than what Sam Pittman and company expect them to be, they'll win 10 games. They will win 10 games. But if it is the weak, if it is the clear weakness of this football team, then I'm going to be more around my line of eight, maybe even seven. If they step up, that is the, that is the key to the entire season, in my opinion, Mike. Maybe I'm overblowing it, but I don't think so. All right, Ty, moment of truth. Who wins a ball game? And you better not say Cincinnati. Yeah, I, I don't think Arkansas fans would ever listen to me on this <laughs> show again or on the morning rush. I think they would completely eradicate me from their system. I think Arkansas is in a dogfight till about the fourth quarter, and they pull away late. I think maybe a turnover. We saw it last year against Rice. Rice. They had like 12 penalties last year, something insane. Pittman was asked about that earlier this week. He's like, yeah, we're going to clean that up. You can tell he was hot about that question and kind of the start of last season. I'm going to say Arkansas wins this game, and it's Thursday, so I have a right to change on Friday and Saturday. I'm going to say they win 34-17. to 17. I'm going to say Cam Little, Cam Little kicks two field goals. The defense is up to snuff. They might allow a touchdown or two, but I think 34-17 Arkansas fans would be more than happy. The line's like, depending on who you ask, it's anywhere from six to eight. So yeah. if you cover by that much, I think – Arkansas fans should be hyped heading into a big game against South Carolina the following week. Yeah, no doubt. All right, Ty, I really appreciate your time. Tell the audience uh, where to find your work. Well, you can find me at AJ's Graydon Beach uh, this time next year. <laughs> no question about that. But, yeah, you can go at Ty Sports Radio, uh, the morning rush, the show that I'm with, uh, the voice of Arkansas Razorbacks, Chuck Barrett, and then Tommy Kraft, who's the best boss in the country. We do that every day from 6 to 9 a.m., on hitthatline.com and ESPN Arkansas. So he's picking Arkansas, Shane, of course, as you expect to win big in this matchup, just so mm -hmm. you know. Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> All right, buddy. So, hey, I appreciate Ty, as always, hopping on the show, one of the best out there in the SEC radio land, but uh, confident in those hogs, Shane, as he should be. You know what? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, and you talk about a team, you talk about a community that is that is just on cloud nine right now. It's the Arkansas Razorbacks, and, and you mm -hmm. see it online, you see it at every social media outlet. Hell, even TikToks. I keep getting, I keep getting into their algorithms, and I, I, there's a lot of <laughs> anticipation, a lot of excitement over there, and rightfully so. I mean, you hear it, in Ty's voice here. How many times during our Twitter Spaces, Shane, we have Arkansas people coming there, and uh, I mean, it was, it was not even a bold take by the end of the call that uh, Arkansas is going to beat Alabama. That, I don't even know if that's going to be a test. It's more like a speed bump for them fans. I can't, I can't even imagine what local radio is going through <laughs> over there because if they found that SEC podcast, I, because you're right, <laughs> they found our Twitter spaces, and uh, it, it is a lot of Arkansas, a lot of, a lot of just passion, and uh, and and it's time, man. They deserve nice things. They've 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 had some bad years, so. Um, I, I, I hope all goes well, but you know, now it's time to put up or shut up. You know, yep. the talking season's over. It's kickoff time, baby. Now our second interview, Shane, another great one. We